Today we are going to talk about AKS RBAC roles or Kubernetes RBAC roles. Hello everyone, my name is Aaron and let's get started. Well, in previous few videos, we have talked about the access to the AKS cluster, the use of config file, of course, and we all know if our users have that config file, they would have all the access that Kubernetes provided, and it's not safe, right? It's not good as for the security as well. Moreover, for example, right now you see on the screen there's an AKS cluster, and uh, here is the uh, three users. Here we have three users. Okay, and these three users are trying to access the Kubernetes cluster. Now, if all have the same config file, they might, you know, come across with each other's work, and that's not the right way of accessing cluster to provide config file to everyone. We have already talked about it, and this Kubernetes uh, provide something called RBAC okay which gives the uh, something like who access what okay the authoritative and authorization for a kubernetes cluster so this rbac comes here and these users will not talk to the kubernetes directly but they all will go to rbac and then it will go to the kubernetes as per the role or the permission they have right it's, it's very simple when it was not RBAC they were directly getting the master access or the administrator access they can do anything they want but it's not have a single user right we have multiple users some coming in the morning some coming in the evening and they should have a different uh, permissions different access role they have a different task to perform so there is RBAC, which is provided by Kubernetes, that comes in between and as per the permission associated with the user, they can do only that part of their work, right? So, normal user accounts allow more traditional access for human administrators or developers, not just services and processes. Kubernetes itself doesn't provide an identity management solution where regular user accounts and passwords are stored. We talked about it, right? Uh, instead, external identity solution can be integrated into Kubernetes. Okay, for example, right now it's RBAC, we can integrate the Azure AD, which is, of course, the identity management solution. We will uh, do that in the next videos, of course. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and understand the RBAC for Kubernetes or AKS. So that's how it works. And this is the RBAC of uh, Kubernetes, okay? Now, if this RBAC only belongs to the Kubernetes, then it's very simple. It will only allow the permissions to the Kubernetes resources, right? So that's what it is. But now, as I was saying, the external identity solution, if we go ahead and integrate Azure AD, because Azure also has uh, its own RBAC, then it would have the RBAC on the Azure resources once it's, get, once it's integrated with the AKS. So let's suppose this is Azure AD and uh, it's integrated with AKS, then the RBAC, the Azure RBAC, it has the permissions or uh, over the Azure resources, right? Cool, so it, it would look like something like that, okay? Now, uh, let's talk about this. Let's suppose this is RBAC, okay? And RBAC assign permissions to the users. Okay. 
now let me take this here and let's suppose uh, the point is it will not directly assign permissions uh, we create role and role has the permissions and we bind those role with the users that's how it's supposed to be so it would look like something like this we create role and we assign it with the users like this and now as for the permissions uh, in the role which is associated with the user identity it would able to perform only those steps okay only those permissions so uh, basically in kubernetes we got two kinds of role like the cluster role and role let me point it out here role and the cluster role it is because we got two kind of resources in cluster uh, the cluster that goes for the entire cluster including nodes and all and we do have the namespaces right for example in the same cluster we have given the resources under uh, dev team namespace or maybe for the prod team namespace so you can say the cluster uh, role is the bigger as compared to the uh, namespace namespace it belongs to a particular uh, a team or the developers or things like that uh, both are different right for roles the permission that we associate is for the namespaces and for the cluster role the permission we associate is for the cluster so let me write this down here and the way we give these permissions to the uh, user is called bindings role bindings and cluster role bindings okay hope this mind map would have a little idea like what i'm trying to talk about here but in the next video when we will perform the demonstration when we'll see all the inbuilt roles in the kubernetes cluster and you can also create your own roles with the help of yaml files of course we'll see all that in the demonstration then this mind map will definitely help you to understand what is going on okay cool all right so uh that's all about it well thank you for watching and you have a good day let's meet in another video where we'll perform the demonstration bye, -bye.